Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm going to talk you through some of the latest features that Snowflake have just announced, which I personally feel are quite underrated in the market at the moment. And that's the Snowflake Cortex AI SQL functions. And I've picked out three, I think are the most impactful. I'm going to tell you what they are, tell you when you need to use them. And then we're going to dive into a demo and see them work for real. So I hope you find this video useful. Imagine being able to ask your database questions in plain English instead of writing complex where clauses. You can classify thousands of customer reviews automatically or generate professional responses to client feedback all with simple SQL commands. There's no external tools that you need to integrate and they're built right into Snowflake. So you can now combine the power of large language models directly with the performance and security that your Snowflake data platform provides. That means no data leaves your environment, no API calls to external services, and no complex integrations. And the value is immediate, so you get faster analysis, deeper insights, and it provides the ability to work with unstructured text data that was previously very difficult and complex to query. Now, there's three AI functions that we're going to focus on as part of this module. And there's actually a larger suite of AI SQL functions out there and available to use. But I've narrowed this down to what I think are the most impactful free functions. That's going to help you really accelerate the power and insights you get from your data. The first one is AI filter. Now, think of this as a smart where clause. So instead of writing complex conditions, you simply describe what you're looking for. If you want to find frustrated customers, you can just ask for feedback that expresses frustration. If you need to find urgent support tickets, then you can ask for tickets that indicate urgent technical issues. The AI understands context and nuances that traditional SQL can't handle. The second one is AI Classify. Now this automatically sorts your unstructured data into categories. You can feed it customer reviews and get back sentiment labels, for example. Or you can give it support tickets and receive priority classifications. The third and final one we're gonna to cover today is AI Complete. This generates professional content based upon the data that you give it. So if you need to respond to client feedback, it could write an email for you. If you want a project status update, it can create a summary. Or if you need to produce an executive report, well, it can generate the analysis for you. Now, we're gonna check out these in action using our Northstar Analytics Consultant Database, where we'll analyze real client feedback classify employee performance reviews, and generate business communications, all with simple SQL commands. And before we get into the demo, I just want to make you aware that I'm using this Northwind Analytics database. And this is something I've designed exclusively for my Master and Snowflake members. It's based on a fictitious consultant company. And we've got everything from internal employee information to how projects are going to customer feedback and clients. So that's what we're going to be using for the next demos. Okay, so let's get into some AI magic, starting with AI filter. As I mentioned before, we're using our Northstar Analytics database and data set, and I'll walk you through some of these examples as we get going. So remember now, AI filters like a smart where close as part of your SQL queries, but let's start with a very basic example. Let's ask a question about the real world. So we're saying AI filter is New York in the United States. Execute that. That now returns true, so it understands facts about the real world. But what about our data set that we've got in our database? So we've got an example table here called client feedback. This is feedback our clients have given us based upon the projects we've carried out for them. And you can see by looking at this feedback underscore text column, we have a range of feedback and a varying degree of sentiment, all the way from positive stuff, such as the sales dashboard exceeded our expectations and our team loves it daily, right away through to more negative sentiment, where this one mentions the student's analytic platform is helpful, but the interface is not user-friendly for our teachers and has poor design choices. Notice we've also got a rating in here, five is the most positive, all the way through to two, and that's the lowest that we've got in our data set for the most negative sentiment. That helps us track our accuracy of the models that we're using today. Now imagine if you wanted to pull any feedback out that looked positive, how would you do that using standard SQL? It'd be very, very difficult, complex and time consuming. And often you would need to get that out of your database platform and send it to something external, such as an external function. Not anymore though with AI filter. Here we are concatenating this question. So the client feedback is positive and expresses satisfaction with our feedback text column here. 
and returning the results. So we wanna have just positive feedback coming back. This is what we get. If you look at all ratings, they're all five, so that validates it's doing what it should be. If we take a look at this, we've got all positive feedback in there. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as writing the work clause with AI filter under there. We can also look at it a bit more advanced. And again, these are examples from my Master in Snowflake program. This is all free for my members to download and use in their own environment. So if you're interested, please check out the application in the comments beneath this video. But let's look at the prompt function. The prompt function here embedded within the AI filter call allows you to parameterize values coming in. So we're looking now at employee reviews or employee reviews table. This is where we've got our employee IDs and a performance rating as well as review text. Now we want to pull out anyone that is indicating excellent performance. We're parameterizing this using the prompt command and passing in our values. And you can extend this further to add multiple values in here. So here we go. We're returning, everyone is doing well. Notice the performance rating is five and four out of five, with five being the best. And we've got the review text here. Amanda's creative and produces engaging marketing content. Her campaigns drive good results. So again, think of the challenges working with this data using native ANSI SQL. I might show you one more from what we've got. So we've got a support tickets table in here. Um, and we're using the AI filter again to pull out anything which we think indicates an urgent technical issue. If we execute that command, let's have a look at the result set here. So it's pulled out these particular issues and we've got priorities in the system that we've already categorized in our database, but is it correct? So here we've got high and critical priorities AI filters pulling these out, agreeing that it's an urgent technical issue, but also here it's pulling this one out. So data export problems, cannot export travel trend reports to PDF format, get in system areas. Now our customer service advisors categorize this as low in the database. This is flagging that it's potentially an urgent technical issue. So it allows you to flag things where the priority might be different to what the AI filter is suggesting that could be an urgent issue. So it helps you pinpoint your resources and double down on those areas where you might have a mismatch in the database versus the actual support ticket call. Let's move on now to AI classify. So AI classify, if you remember, helps you classify unstructured data into one or more classifications. Let's start again with a basic example. We've got select AI classify. Our sales dashboard project was completed successfully, positive or negative. So here's the two different classifications we're providing as part of that function that it can choose between. And we've got a JSON message back giving us the positive label. If we were to change this text to say wasn't completed successfully, and now we go to negative. So this proves that it's able to look at the text-based output and define it as a classification. So that's a really easy one. We can also do multi-label classification. So again, we're just passing in hard code and values at the moment. The project had technical issues, but the client was satisfied with the final outcome. And we're now giving it four different choices. And we're also saying in the output mode, it can be multi-classification. So you can pick one or more of these if you like. And so let's execute that. And we get the client satisfaction label along with technical coming back there as well. So again, you can have multiple labels in here. If I scroll down and I'll show you one more that's a little bit more advanced. Here now we're using our projects table, our projects data set where we've got a project name, a description in here. And here we're using the AI classify, we're concatenating our project name and description, and we're asking it to categorize things with these particular labels. And again, we're specifying it to multi-classification output. If we execute that, it's picking up our sales analytics dashboard. It's telling us that's a data analytics visualization project. Notice that we're passing in the project name and description into the function and that's what it's using to help classify and label each of these different records. If we pick another one out, here we've got travel trend analysis, analyze global trend, uh, travel trends and predict future popular destinations. This has got three different categories, so you're not just limited to one or two, you can have more than that again. 
if it deems it's relatable to more than two classifications, we'll add in another one. And um, so you've got data analytics, machine learning, and visualization in here as well. So really easy to categorize stuff, and you're only really limited by your creativity here. Finally, let's move on now to AI complete. This is a little bit different in terms of syntax. Now we're specifying different LLM models. We've got Snowflake's Arctic model, but also all the partnerships they have with other third-party providers. We've got Mistral Large, we're using Llama 2 here. And again, these models all have their strengths and weaknesses and different purposes. And you know, you can have a look yourself what that looks like. But AI complete now is almost like you're in the chat GPT style um, behavior within your Snowflake environment, using the data within your Snowflake environment. It's clean, secured, it doesn't go anywhere, it all stays where, where it is. So we've got select AI complete, we're giving it the model name, we're using the Snowflake native Arctic model in this case. We've then got the question here, complete this project status update, the sales dashboard project is, we're not passing in any other information, so it can basically do whatever it likes with this. And there we go, so sales dashboard project is currently in the development phase, et cetera, et cetera. So it's made up all of this text here. And again, we can use this little drop down on the right hand side to expand this out. Notice it's got some formatting parameters in there as well, and we can copy that out and do other things with it. The other use case that I like is generating follow-up emails for client feedback. So here we've got our client feedback table from, that we used earlier, we're looking at where anything is less than or equal to free. So it's a um, neutral to negative sentiment. We're using the Snowflake Arctic model again. And now we're saying, okay, write a professional follow-up email response to the client feedback. And we're able to do this at scale now because we can pick up everything from the table and actually generate all of these. We're also using these XML tags to pass in the feedback text and help format the prompt before it goes into the model. If we execute that, and here's what we get back. So there's the original feedback text and rating. So we've picked up everything free and below. And here's our follow-up email. So let's expand this out. It's given us a subject and it's saying, dear client's name, thank you for taking the time to provide us with your valuable feedback, et cetera, et cetera. So it's given us a tailored email based upon the feedback text that we've had, um, which is neutral or negative at scale. We'll look at one more and we'll go to the support tickets uh, for anything in progress in terms of a ticket at the moment. Again, we're using the Snowflake native Arctic LLM model and we're asking it to provide step-by-step -step resolution instructions for this support ticket. Again, we're using our tags to pass in the subject um, as well as the description. And if we put this into our Snowflake Arctic model, let's see what it comes up with. And there you have in a couple of seconds, it's picked up our support ticket data. It's looked at this one, which is model accuracy concerns. The patient prediction model seems to have lower accuracy this week. Can you investigate was the comments in the ticket. And then the first thing is it's providing a step-by-step -step output in terms of what it suggests is the resolution. Again, you can make this more sophisticated by providing historical input of what problems have previously been resolved by the team and you get a better, more tailored output for you to use. So that's all I want to cover in this short video, three of the most impactful Cortex AI SQL functions in Snowflake, and I encourage you to give it a go today. And if you watch this far and you're super interested in getting into more detail and more sophistication, not just on this, but everything Snowflake related, then please feel free to reach out to join my Master in Snowflake program. You can find the links in the description of the video below. In the meantime, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos coming very soon.